Distinguished colleagues, ladies, gentlemen, good morning and greetings from Vienna. And good morning to those that have already listened to me yesterday afternoon. My name is Anna Joubanret. I'm the secretary of UNCITRAL, the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. It gives me great pleasure to take part in this conference on the law of obligations organized by the University of Zagreb. For those of you who did not attend yesterday's ev yesterday evening's presentation, I wish to apologize that neither my colleagues nor myself can be with you here in person. Unfortunately, the UN is going through a severe cash flow crisis, which means that we can only join you virtually today. I thank you very much for this opportunity of speaking about the upcoming anniversary of the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods and about the work Ancitral is doing in this area. The CISG, as it is known, is a fundamental international trade treaty and a successful instrument of Ancitral. As of today, 92 countries have adopted the CISG. Most recently, the Lao People's Republic, Democratic uh, Republic has acceded to the convention in September this year. And the Democratic People's Republic of Korea acceded in March of this year. We hope that by the coming year, when we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the adoption of the CISG at the 1980 Vienna Diplomatic Conference, we will reach our target of 100 member states. Under the motto CISG at 40, the UNCITRAL Secretariat is organizing a series of events around the world in order to celebrate the convention's success but also to reinform, reinforce our commitment to promoting its effective use and uniform interpretation. The event today here at the University of Zagreb is an early CISG event, a pre-event, if you wish, and a preview for the events to follow in 2020. We are very happy to be able to contribute to this conference, at least with this video message, and that the organizers have featured this important celebration in the impressive program they have put together for this conference. Let me briefly talk about UNCITRAL, although I suspect that many in the room are familiar with its work. The United Nations Conve Commission on International Trade Law is a commission of the United Nations General Assembly and recognized as the core legal body of the United Nations system in the field of international trade law. Established by the General Assembly Resolution 2205 of 17 December 1966, UNCITRAL is mandated with the progressive harmonization and unification of the law of international trade, a mandate motivated by the belief that international trade cooperation among states is an important factor in the maintenance of peace and security. This is a vision that holds true today as specifically acknowledged by the UN General Assembly in its 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The approach we are taking in UNCITRAL to build bridges between legal traditions and harmonize different legal systems to make it easier to trade and invest across borders can be seen in the legislative history of the CISG, but also in the ongoing work of Working Group 3 on the Reform of Investor State Dispute Settlement, Working Group 5 on Insolvency, and Working Group 4 on Electronic Commerce. Developing international trade law through a multilateral process does not mean that the national legislator is to be replaced by an international one. When the General Assembly deliberated on UNCITRAL's creation, it did so on the belief, on the basis of the Schmidthoff study which considered to be UNCITRAL's pre-founding document. The study highlighted the main aspects to be considered when dealing with international trade law on a multilateral basis. It stressed the need to establish a commission at the level of the UN General Assembly and advocated for such a commission to draft internationally acceptable legal solutions. At the same time, it also highlighted that action such as incorporating elements into the national legal framework should be done at the discretion of individual states, referring to this, this as the leave and license of national sovereign. 
Legislative instruments developed by ANSITRAB have to be adhered to or enacted by the national legislators. Whether international conventions, model legislative texts, legislative guides or other soft law instruments, such as for example our arbitration rules, they all have to be adopted by domestic legislators or by parties to become law or rules applicable to the transactions at hand. In its first session in 1968, one of the foremost issues of the agenda of ANSITRAL was the law of sales and potential further work based on the two predecessors of the CISG, i.e. the Uniform Law on the Formation of Contracts for the International Sale of Goods of 1964 and the Convention relating to the Uniform Law on the International Sale of Goods of 1964. UNIDROIT had began its work on this project already in 1930 in Rome. The preparation was then interrupted by the Second World War and a first draft was not submitted to a diplomatic conference until 1964 in The Hague. However, the texts adopted by UNIDROIT were drafted mainly by countries of continental Western Europe and failed to achieve broader acceptance. Ancitral picked up the work on the CISG in 1968 with the task of developing a convention that could achieve worldwide acceptance. The CISG was adopted on 11 April 1980 by a diplomatic conference at the Hofburg in Vienna. The drafting history of the CISG has been well documented, including with respect to the use of the comparative method in its preparation. You can find the travaux préparatoires of the CISG on the ANSITRAL webpage. Unlike its two predecessors, ULF and ULIS, the inclusive method of work that ANSITRAL applied to the preparation and negotiation of the CISG increased the number of participating states, their geographic diversity, and consequently also the sources of inspiration of the uniform text. The resulting treaty is a success in terms of its technical quality, the number of state parties, and its continued relevance to business. The CISG comprises 101 articles and covers the sale of goods from the contract formation to the rights and obligations of the parties and the consequences of a breach of contract. There are two main principles governing the CISG, predictability and flexibility. The CISG contains a complete set of default rules and reinforces the principles of freedom of contract and party autonomy. It also upholds party autonomy in jurisdictions less familiar with that notion, or even when it is opted out of by virtue of that very principle. On a practical level, the CISG has three dimensions. It is a treaty that is the centerpiece of a system of complementary treaties and other legal texts governing international sales. The CISG is also a model law inspiring regional and domestic law reform. And finally, the CISG is a neutral, a national law and a piece of Lex Mercatoria. The CISG had direct influence on the development of domestic law in various jurisdictions, in particular in the, er the area of the law of obligations you are discussing here today. Just to give you a few examples, the Civil Code of the Russian Federation and the Chinese Contract Law borrowed a number of provisions from the CISG. The CISG was also the most influential international instrument in the reform of the Bürgerliches Gesetzbuch in Germany and also inspired the development of the mercantile law in France. A treaty closely related to the CISG is the 1974 Convention on the Limitation Period in the International Sale of Goods, also known as the Limitation Convention. The Limitation Convention brings clarity and predictability to an important aspect of the adjudication of claims. It establishes uniform rules governing the period of time within which a party to a contract for the international sale of goods must commence legal proceedings to make a claim under the contract. The Limitation Convention was amended in 1980 in order to harmonize its text with the CISG. It may be functionally seen as a part of the CISG and is therewith 
an important step towards a comprehensive standardization of international sales law. I would like to mention that there are cases involving Croatian parties applying the limitation conventions. Croatian neighbors are already parties to the limitation conventions and therefore we can only encourage Croatia to join the treaty as well. As part of its mandate, ANSITRAL also undertakes a range of technical cooperation and assistance activities to promote its work and the use and adoption of the text that it has developed. These activities include organizing briefing missions and participating in seminars and conferences as we do today, assisting countries in assessing their trade law reform needs, including by reviewing existing legislation, assisting with the drafting of national legislation to implement ANSITRAL texts, and organizing training activities to facilitate the implementation and interpretation of legislation based on ANSITRAL texts by judges and legal practitioners. Easy access to decisions interpreting and applying ANSITRAL texts is therefore particularly important in the light of the principle of autonomous interpretation of uniform law texts contained in several ANSITRAL texts, including the CISG. Therefore, ANSITRAL decided in 1988 to establish CLOUD, a system for collecting and disseminating information on court decisions and arbitral awards relating to ANSITRAL texts. The purpose of the system, the CLOUD system, is to promote international awareness on the texts and to facilitate their uniform interpretation and application. Currently, CLOUD includes abstracts of over 950 cases involving the interpretation and application of the CISG from over 60 jurisdictions. In light of the large number of CISG-related cases collected in CLOUD, the Commission requested in 2001 that a tool be specifically designed to, pre to present selected information on the interpretation of the Convention in a clear, concise and objective manner. The request led to the preparation of the ANSITRAL Digest of Case Law on the CISG, which has further supported the goal of its uniform interpretation. The Digest, first published in 2004, is meant to reflect the evolution of case law and ANSITRAL is therefore committed to periodic release of updates. The Digest was last updated in 2016. In order to rejuvenate CLOUD and to improve the guidance by ANSITRAL on the interpretation and application of its text, the Commission approved a proposal to mobilize national correspondence, establish a steering committee and expand the network of contributors by involving new partners. This is also a call to the audience today here to join us in collecting and further disseminating the cases and case law interpreting and applying the CISG. Another recent development to note is a collaboration between ANSITRAL, the Hague Conference on Private International Law, and the International Institute for the Unification of Private Law, UNIDROIT, to elaborate a legal guide to international commercial contracts with a focus on sales. Over time, the HCCH, UNIDROIT and ANSITRAL have each produced a series of texts on international sales contracts that are complementary. The CISG, the UNIDROIT Principles of International Commercial Contracts and the, the HCCH Principles on Choice of Law in International Commercial Contracts, also known as the HCCH Principles. Additionally, ANSITRAL and HCCH have adopted treaties that closely relate to the CISG and to the HCCH principles and complement the regulations at, as to specific matters. The drafting efforts regarding these texts have often been carried out in coordination with the other organizations as the legislative history of the CISG illustrates. Against this background, the joint work on a legal guide aims at clarifying the relationship between these texts with a view to promoting their adoption, the use and uniform interpretation, and ultimately, the, establishing, the establishment of a predictable and flexible legal, legal environment 
for cross-border commercial transactions based on the principle of freedom of contract. The legal guide will be finalized and published in 2020, right in time for the CISG anniversary celebrations. The 92 countries party to the CISG represent about 80% of the world's international trade. However, it has to be considered that a significant number of contracts still exclude the CISG from their application. A reason for the exclusion of the CISG may be that lawyers prefer to apply the law they know better and practice more frequently. Therefore, promotion and capacity building in order to promote uniform interpretation are also particularly important in order to further increase the confidence of practitioners in the text and its use in practice. As new technologies are emerging and practice is developing, it has also to be ensured that the CISG is in line with the needs of business. The adoption of the Electronic Communications Convention in 2005 complementing the CISG can be seen as a measure or means to that end. As I mentioned in my presentation yesterday, the Ancetral Secretariat also has also been mandated to prepare a work plan to address specific legal issues related to the digital economy and digital trade, including recommendations for dealing with them in existing instruments. With regard to the CISG, a question to be considered could include the impact of smart contracts and data transactions on the international sale of goods and the application of CISG. Finally, I would like to draw your attention to the CISG at 40 webpage, which you can find on the Ancestral webpage under Events and News. This webpage contains information about all CISG at 40 events and provides you with further material around the CISG and Ancestral's work in this area. With that, I wish you a very fruitful discussion. I look forward to following the outcome of this conference and I thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.